Mickey Meets the Giant, a Walt Disney beginner reader. Once upon a time, there lived a brave woodcutter named Mickey. His work took him from place to place. One day, he came to a pretty town. It was called Cedar Grove. These hills are just full of sweet-smelling trees, he thought. I can sell that wood, and I'll make a lot of money. But first, I must make sure that my axe is sharp. So the woodcutter walked through the streets of the town. There were many people in the street. Everyone looked very upset. What will happen to us, one woman cried. We must find someone who can beat the giant, yelled a man. Why is everyone so afraid of this giant? What has he done, asked Mickey. The people told him about a night when the giant decided to have a little fun. And while they lay sleeping, the giant began to whistle. He whistled and the wind blew. He whistled through their windows. The wind blew through their homes. It blew all the sleeping people right out of their beds. Mickey didn't like that story very much, and he didn't like the next one at all. One day, the giant wanted to play. He jumped rope in the fields. They had just been planted. He made footprints all over the fields. And that night, it rained. The next day, the field was covered with foot foot-shaped lakes. When the giant saw his footprints filled with water, he began to laugh. He laughed so hard that he fell down. He rolled on the ground. He laughed some more. Everything for miles around shook as he laughed. This was too much for the animals in the forest. They were so afraid that they ran for their lives. Now there are no animals in Cedar Grove, said the giant, and soon there will be no people either. Ho, ho. What a terrible giant, thought Mickey. And just then, a wagon came racing into town and it stopped. The driver jumped to the ground and he told Mickey his story. I was taking my family away from Cedar Grove, but a huge boulder rolled right onto the road. It was so big that there was no way around it. I looked up to see where it came from, and there stood the giant. The giant laughed very hard when he saw that I was afraid. His laugh was as loud as thunder, and my horse was so scared that he turned right around and ran as fast as he could back here to Cedar Grove. The giant had blocked the only way out of town. Now the people of Cedar Grove were trapped. The brave woodcutter had heard enough. Let me face the giant, he said. I have beaten bullies before, and I'll do it again. But everyone laughed at the woodcutter. You cannot beat this giant, said a kind policeman. But I do think you must be a very brave young man. Stan Doolittle is the man to do this, said the policeman. I remember the time that Stan ran a mean old bear out of Cedar Grove. Stan stepped to the front. I will show the giant who is boss, he said. It was not long before Stan came running home. He was dripping wet and very upset. The giant had picked up poor Stan by his hair and he had dropped Stan right into a cup of tea. So the people called a town meeting and this time they picked the tallest man in Cedar Grove to challenge the giant. But tall Tom was not a brave man and he did not want to meet the giant. But at last off he went. Before the townspeople could count to three, Tom Tall came back running. I just saw the giant break the tallest tree in the forest into two pieces, he cried. I did not want that to happen to me. The people in the town did not know what to do next. That does it. I am going to beat this giant, said Mickey. I may be small, but I am not afraid. Before I go, I will need three things. I'll need a bag. I'll need a drinking straw, and I'll need the whitest, roundest cheese in town. I have a plan. The people wondered what the woodcutter wanted with such things, but they gave, them, gave him what he asked for, and then they told him how to find the giant. When the woodcutter got to the giant's cave, he looked everywhere, but he could not find the giant. So he walked into the deep, dark cave, and there he found bats and rats, but there was no sign of a giant. The woodcutter decided to wait for the giant. He had hopped onto a rock outside the cave, and just then the rock began to shake. Whoa, what's going on here, cried Mickey. 
ho, 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 came the rumbling noise from above, and the woodcutter looked up and up and up. Oh, I see, Mickey said. You must be the giant. Well, I am very glad to meet you, said Mickey in a small voice. You mean you're not afraid of me, asked the giant. Afraid of you? Why, I am here to challenge you, said Mickey. Ho, 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 thundered the giant. Bigger men than you have tried to beat me. They have failed. I'll just have to show you how strong I am. Watch this, roared the giant, and then he wrapped his huge hand around the widest tree in the forest, and he pulled it up as if it were a carrot from a garden. And this, he said, and he pounded his huge hand on the ground, and the ground came apart. It became a deep, long canyon. Now it's my turn, said Mickey to the giant. Watch how far I can blow this leaf. A leaf, yelled the giant. I could blow down 50 trees with one breath. And the giant took a deep breath. Whoosh! And there lay 50 trees on the forest floor. Mickey now knew his plan would work. Not bad, he told the giant. Now it's my turn. Watch how far I throw this stone. That is just a pebble, said the giant. Step aside. The giant bent down to pick up a boulder. Oh, but that is such a tiny rock, cried Mickey. Why not throw the one over there? And Mickey pointed to the very boulder that was blocking the road to Cedar Grove. The giant gathered all of his strength, and he knew threw that boulder far, far away. And now the road was not blocked. My plan is working better than I had hoped, thought Mickey. He reached into his bag and pulled out the drinking straw. Watch this, he said to the giant. I am going to drink all of the water in this pond. Straws and ponds are for weaklings, said the giant. I can drink a lake. Can you drink all of those foot-shaped lakes in the planting fields, asked Mickey. Watch me, said the giant. And with that, he drank all of the water in each and every lake. Now the giant was tired, and he was so full of water that he was about to burst. Here's an easy one for you, said Mickey. How much water can you squeeze out of a stone? The giant picked up a stone, and he squeezed it as hard as he could, but no water came from the stone. What kind of giant are you? asked Mickey, and he held up the round white cheese. See this stone? Watch this. Then he squeezed and squeezed, and water ran from the cheese. The giant's eyes grew big with fear, and if you don't leave Cedar Grove at once, said Mickey, why I'll... But the giant turned and ran. Mickey smiled to himself. His plan had worked. He had stood up to the giant and he had made the giant put right all of the wrong things that he had done. Quickly he went back to town. He told the people what he had done and they cheered Mickey for his courage. He became the hero of the town. From that time on, the people of Cedar Grove lived in peace and the giant was never heard from again. The end.